Hey folks, it's Kai, your genderqueer relative here, and today we're going to show you how to make a chainmail star. And for assistance, I'm teaching my child Mason over here how to do that as well. So, first of all, you're going to need a couple pairs of pliers. I use needle nose pliers. They do have grips, like teeth on them, and those teeth will dent your chainmail rings a little bit. So if you would prefer, you can use jeweler's pliers, which have smooth noses, or you can get a little tape and cover this, but you have to be careful because the rings will slip around on the tape. Now we're gonna be using several sizes of rings. First of all, you need an accent color. I have six of these black rings, and Mason's gonna be using red. That size is a 5 16 size and 16 gram. Those are the size pieces of information. I also have the same size, 5 16 16 gram, of silver rings. I have 10 of those. And then I have a smaller ring, which is 18 instead of, it's one quarter inch basically. And these are, um, I have 20 of these. These are my connecting rings. And then finally, at the end, we'll need four or five of these very tiny jump rings, which will connect the corners. And at the end, you're going to have a chain mail star that looks like this. See? Very nice. Makes a nice pendant or ornament or whatever. Um, now, there are two types of movement that you do with the rings themselves. One type of movement is bending them open in order to make it easier to loop them through things. When you bend it open, it will look like this. And when you close the rings, they will form a complete circle. So I'm going to show you how to close the ring right now because we're going to close all 10 of these large rings. So grip with the pliers. Let me adjust the view. We're going to look at my hands for most of the rest of this. And hopefully the cats won't knock over the camera. So you're going to grip with the pliers. like so. And you're going to kind of twist toward the ends. And if you can hear it, you can sometimes hear a click because you kind of clicked the two ends past each other. And then you have a closed ring. So we're going to go ahead and do that nine more times with all these big rings. Do that. Okay, so we've closed all 10 of these big round rings, and next we're going to close five out of six of our colored rings here. Now, these are our accent color. You can choose anything you want. I've used uh, blue in the past. Black was maybe not the best color to demonstrate for this video. The thing about closing these rings is just like I said a moment ago, you need to twist to close them as you push them together. <laughs> kind of to coax the metal into being up against itself. If you don't, if you just try to force the rings to close, what's gonna happen is the ring will bend and it will become an oblong shape, which defeats the point of chain mail. So go ahead and close five out of these six rings. And leave the last one open. Once you have all five of those accent colors closed. Now we're going to slightly open all of the small rings because these are going to be looping rings. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually use both pliers because these are kind of small so I can do it with my hand. If you need to use your pliers go ahead but I'm going to bend this open not like in a huge breaking kind of way but open enough to make it comfortable and easy for me to loop these with several other rings. And I'm going to do this with each and every one of these rings. <laughs> Recording. Alright, so now we have closed accent rings, closed shiny rings, and open connector rings that are a little smaller. That'll give us a nice tight weave. And what I'm going to do next is start a pattern. Chainmail is about patterns. So most of the time it's about connecting things together over and over again. I'm going to take one accent ring 
and I'm going to take two of my shiny rings, and I'm going to make them into a sandwich, like so. And then I'm going to take one of these small rings and thread it through so that it goes through them in order, like this. You can see, like that. And then I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm going to close that first little ring. around all of those rings, like so. So now I just have a pile of rings. Close that neatly. And now I'm gonna take a second one of these little accent rings, or excuse me, a second one of these connector rings, and do exactly the same thing. So they have two rings connecting, like this. Okay. This little starter that looks like this. Two rings connected with two rings to one accent ring. Then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm going to take two rings and the reason I am sandwiching them like this is because even though I don't need to right now that's going to be how I connect them as we get further down. Okay? So now we're going to connect this again with two rings one at a time. One ring goes through the silver, goes through the black, goes through the silver again, or excuse me, goes through the accent color, and then the silver again. And remember to make sure you get your rings as close to all the way close as you can, because if you don't, any pulling on them will make them come apart, especially when you're using aluminum rings like I'm using right now. So then I'm going to take one more of those connector rings. Excuse me. You got to make sure you go all through the same way. So the accent color should be in between the silver rings like a little accent sandwich. Part of the reason it's important to make sure that your rings stay round is because if rings get all tangled up, oblong rings will not correct that tangle. So now, uh oh, speaking of tangles, I have made a mess. Oh no. Okay, so if you do the wrong thing like I just did, you can undo it by just opening the ring back up and taking it off if you catch it fast enough. Hopefully you caught it fast enough like me that you have not done a bunch of things afterward. So the thing I just messed up is that I tucked it in the wrong way. Okay? So, let's do this again. I have one ring here, I need to flip them over, and then I follow the same pattern with my second ring, like so. to close it and now I have this basic where I have two connector rings and two silver rings and then I have two connector rings and two silver rings again this is going to be repeating a pattern over and over again and I'll show you how so now we're going to start a pattern so what we're going to do is flip take these this is why I told you to just practice the sandwich, okay? So you're gonna basically take these two silver rings and sandwich the black ring, okay? Or the accent ring. And now you're gonna actually connect another accent ring. Or 
more connector rings and then the accent rings. So like this. You're going to take these two silver rings and another black ring and put it right here. See? And then you're going to take these two silver rings, the big ones, and you're going to take one of these and you're going to loop it through. Now you don't have a lot of room to loop it through. So you got to pinch right here. And you got to make sure that this goes silver. I'm very good at doing this on camera. It goes silver, black, silver, or silver, accent color, silver. And then you go through all three of them so that the black stays in the middle. This is important because if you don't sandwich it that way, then they'll get all tangled. So I've got it like that, and now I'm going to close it. Okay, so now I have three out of four, and I'm going to do the same thing again on the other side, going down basically, like this. Make sure it goes through your accent color, silver, accent color, silver. And then you close this one as well. And this is where you'll start to see the pattern of the chain. Because this is the first link of the chain. And see when I pull it, you see how the two sides go toward each other? Now we're going to do this a bunch of times. So next, we're going to go ahead and grab two rings and connect them again to this guy with the first connector ring. So two silver connects to the next accent color with a connector ring and we're going to close it again. And then you're just going to take another one and do the same thing. So that you have two rings. Two connectors. Two rings. If you're having trouble doing this, you might try uh, just seeing whether you opened all these little connector rings open far enough. If you didn't, it's, there's no shame in opening them a little further, just as long as you don't accidentally break it. And I will say probably the biggest risk in making chainmail, besides having stronger hands, is uh, absolutely getting your fingers pinched in here. Pinch my finger or the flesh of my hand in the plier all the time. Okay, so now you've got another double ring, just so. And you see that we have two accent rings so far. We're going to do this chain over and over until we have five. And I will show you that. So next we're just going to do this again. We're going to flip these two big rings down. We're going to open up the small rings so that we have a pocket. And then we're going to take another accent color and hold it squeezed between the two silver rings. And then take another connector. Drop everything. That's part of how this works. Drop everything. Take another connector. And just kind of follow through this line. If you miss your accent ring, make sure you fix it because it needs to be sandwiched between the two silver ones for this to work. So, accent ring. There we go. And then you close it. Then you grab another one, 
and do the same thing again. Roll it through. You can tell that this is my least favorite part. And then connect it. I'm using aluminum rings, and if you're doing something like this, I definitely do not recommend that you use something like steel rings. They are very hard to work with on fine detail projects, and you don't want to get stuck. So then you can see now that I have an actual little chain. I have three accents, and I have what will be three of the silver, and I'm just going to keep going and repeating this over and over again for a while. So again, I'm going to take two of these large rings and one of the connectors, and I'm going to connect that to the big black ring. And close it again. And once that's closed, I'm going to take a second one, a second accent, excuse me, connector, and I'm going to run that the same way. And then I'm going to close it. It's also important when you're doing this fine work that you don't accidentally grab too many rings when you're trying to close it. You don't want to bend things out of shape. So now I have two rings on each end. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put these two rings down. Let me see if you can really see what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to I fold the two big rings down, and then I split up the little rings, and then I pull the big rings back up to make a sandwich. That's because I need the little rings to go down out of the way, because I'm only putting the connector ring through the big rings and the black ring or the accent color. So then, I just go like this. Once again. Once again, I am asking you to stay in place while I bend you into shape. Once that's done, I add another connector on the top half of that. One day, I will achieve having the perfect bend of the connector rings so that I don't have to struggle with it, but today, today is not that day. Make sure it's all connected, and then close it. Alright, so here we go. We need to attach one more pair of these double rings and then the black ring or the accent colored ring. So we're going to take these two and we're going to thread them with one of the connectors. And then we're going to put it on like this. Okay? Almost there. Okay, then we add another connector ring, and we go ahead and close that one. There we go. And now we're going to do the 
this last little flip over. Oh, that's not true. One more after this. We'll do this flip over where we flip the rings. Where we argue with the rings. Put them down like a sandwich. Like a weird blossoming sandwich. Then we're gonna take this last closed accent ring and put it here. And then we're gonna take two, one at a time. Drop the ring at least six more times. That's how I roll. Take an accent ring, run it through. Excuse me, a connector ring, I run it through. Hope if I call them the right thing ever. There we go, like this. And we're gonna close it again. Then we're gonna take this one here and close it again as well. have a chain. But of course to get a star we have to close this chain, right? So, so this is where it gets a little tricky. In order to get this to be a star we have to connect it several different ways. The first way that we're going to do that is that we're going to run a connection ring in between all of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to take this open ring and if you haven't already I suggest you open it a little more, your accent ring, and we're going to take the inside part, just all the inside rings here, that should be five, hang on. Excuse me, that should be 10. It's only four right now. So, or five. I can count. Really good. Anyway, so you're gonna run it through all of these. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna basically just loop all of what should be inside rings around it. Gotta make sure you loop them in order because if you don't, it's gonna be really messy. And on your final double ring there, you're only looping one of those two, okay? Because the other one's got to float. Now you've got this mess right here. And you're going to close your accent ring so you don't lose the mess. Obviously, if this pops off, just fix it again. Okay. So now you've got this chain kind of on here and what you're going to do is you're going to bring these around and you're going to connect your last ring just like you have the other ones. The first, the middle accent ring needs to go through, or the middle connector ring needs to go through the accent ring and through both silver chains and through your original accent ring. So, open this ring a little wide, a little extra wide. Take these two accent rings that you've got chilling out here and make sure that they are flipped so that they sandwich. This might be an exciting prospect. Okay. But you want to make sure they are flipped and if you have made it so that the middle ring doesn't go that way then uh, you can fix this by reconnecting that bottom ring right here so like I just made a mess predictable and so I am going to flip 
with the ring. This one. Because right now I have it, it's so tight that I can't get these around to the back. So. This is what I mean by not over bending things, basically. So I'm going to take the top accent ring and open it. And fix the way that my rings here are oriented by taking that off and by flipping oh no it doesn't work at all okay I lied to you I'm gonna do this by taking the bottom ring off and I shouldn't have taken the top one off this is what happens when you get too excited. So, I will slightly open this connector ring, my bottom pair here, and I'm just going to fix it so that, so that my two rings are on either side. So I need one of them over here. Basically, one silver ring on each side of the black rings. That's how you get it to look right. And so if you have troubles, we're just troubleshooting on the fly here. If you have troubles with this because it doesn't connect quite right, and then run the ring quite right, that's fine. You can fix those. And the sound of the blender in the background is just a sound. All right, so then making sure that these are pinching properly, we also will run one back up top because I took that one off. Making sure that I have not undone my pattern Now, finally, we are going to take and connect these two ends. This last So I'm going to connect the top first because that's easier and doesn't involve as much tangling. So I go silver, black, silver, like this, giving me my last outside ring. Second here. Okay, see how that looks? And now the last inside ring needs to connect, which is this weird spot right here. And you need to go again, make sure that the silver is on the either side of the black when you connect it, because otherwise it's a disaster. So you kind of shove this up through the middle. Make sure that you have not accidentally gone inside any other rings, which I definitely just did. Okay, so there we go. Make sure that that other small ring doesn't go around it. It's only going through the big rings, and then you bend it into place. Now you have a nice little pattern here that we're going to finish off with the small rings of just Okay, so now we have this little shape and the last thing we're going to do is take these very tiny rings and we're going to close the star corners, basically. Now I could do this by hand, but I'll probably use the pliers to close to make them good. So you take two of these rings that are your connector rings and you're going to connect them again with these tiny jump rings. So basically just make them a point and make sure the jump ring is closed all the way because if it's not it'll just pop right open okay so we're gonna do four of these with a tiny jump ring and the last one we're gonna do with a bigger jump ring so that you can use it as a pendant or as an ornament or run string through it however you'd like so we're just gonna do this 
drum brings are the worst because they're very easy to snap if you're not careful. But I just happen to have some of these laying around from other jewelry making projects. Mostly code for repairing other jewelry. And then one more. Last one, I'm actually just using another connector ring basically as a big jump ring. Uh, okay, like I said, don't catch the rest of the chain mail in the pliers. There we go. And now you have a little star. And unfortunately, a bunch of different ways to troubleshoot them, as of course I got all tangled up demonstrating these. And now uh, Mason, my handy 15 year old here, is gonna finish following along, and I hope that you have fun working with chainmail and you stay warm.